Senator Blackburn, thank you so much for joining us. Look, you say big tech has stepped over the line when it comes to COVID information. What's the evidence that you have here? One of the things that we're looking at is the coziness between Dr. Fauci and Mark Zuckerberg and the chain of emails there. And then you look at what uh, big tech did, what Facebook did in saying, okay, we're going to disallow any of the posts that have to do with the Wuhan lab leak theory, which was definitely plausible because we knew that our diplomatic scientists had complained about this lab. Uh, we knew that there were concerns in 2018 about this lab and some of their practices and processes. We also saw how YouTube decided to delete a video that a group of physicians had done saying we question the value of these lockdowns and we're concerned about the effect that the lockdowns will have. You had Twitter that had uh, censored and blocked information from a Chinese virologist that was basically saying beware of what is taking place in this lab. So all of these are ways that information was denied to the American people. And Emily, you know, when it comes to big tech and the fact that so many people receive their news over social media, big tech has a lot of sway in what the American public can see and hear and say. So this was uh, one of their overreaches and now because of the email exchanges, we know that what they were doing is working with Dr. Fauci on a PR campaign that would cherry pick information that they would choose to push forward. But you, you, you're asking Dr. Fauci to step aside and testify before Congress because yeah. you say he was in cahoots with Mark Zuckerberg. But if so, he was in cahoots with kind of everyone. I mean, Fauci was doing a lot of interviews, a lot of talking to different people and different companies. Well, indeed he was. He was concerned about protecting the reputation of Dr. Fauci rather than giving information to Congress. You know, it would have been nice if policymakers had known early on that he shared concerns over what was happening at the lab and over gain of function research. And uh, it would have been appropriate to say, you need to know that some of this money that we were sending out through a certain channel actually ended up in this lab and we're trying to figure out if any of it was used in gain of function research we have concerns about what has happened but when you see that he was sending emails that were relative to one thing but in public saying another thing that is a cause for concern and my hope is that my senate colleagues will join me many of them already have and said, Dr. Fauci needs to step aside from his position at this point and work with us to figure out exactly what happened here. Are you asserting for certain that COVID-19 came from a lab in Wuhan? No, I'm not asserting for certain. We know that um, Ubay province was locked down by the Chinese Communist Party and those individuals in Wuhan could not go somewhere else in China, but they could go out to the Wuhan International Airport, get on a plane, and fly anywhere else that they wanted to fly. We do know that research was taking place in this lab. We do know that there were concerns over this lab and their practices. We know that there were three researchers that became ill with a mystery illness in November of 2019. So all of this leads us to say it is important that we find out exactly what happened. You know, Emily, three and a half million people lost their lives. We have hundreds of thousands of Americans. We have families that experience loss of a loved one. We have loss of livelihood that millions of Americans or hundreds of thousands of Americans have experienced. We have so many children that lost a full year of learning that are now having um, emotional issues because of a lack of socialization, because of right. all of these reasons, we need answers.
so, so who are you blaming? Is it China or big tech? And, and, and what needs to be stopped first? First of all, big tech needs to stop censoring. Uh, they need to, they are not going to be the arbiters of what people hear and see and say. And this is a free speech issue. I may not agree with you, but I will defend your right to say such things. And I, I feel like that free speech is so vitally important. And now that they have reversed their position, on uh, the Wuhan lab leak theory, uh, it causes you to wonder, and the uh, emails are insightful in why they chose to block that. Uh, to stand with Beijing and the CCP instead of getting information to the American people, to policymakers in the country, uh, that is something that we need answers for as to why they made that decision. Do, do you think that this means Congress needs to add now, act now? I mean, is this impetus to break up big tech, break up Facebook? We're already working on privacy and data security legislation. We have Section 230 reform legislation that is out there. There is antitrust legislation that is beginning to move its way through. Of course, you know, those four issues are four issues that I group together under what I call the virtual you protection agenda, which allows people to control their data and to control um, their information flow and what big tech can have access to. But big tech, we can deal with holding the Chinese Communist Party to account. That is something else that we should be focused on. We also want to make certain that when taxpayer dollars are expended, that Congress is going to know where those dollars end up. So who on the Democratic side is working with you? Because it seems like both Democrats and Republicans want to take action on big tech, but for totally different reasons. And I wonder where that ends. Well, you know, uh, Senator Blumenthal is the chairman and I'm the ranking Republican on the Consumer Protection Data Security Subcommittee at Commerce. And earlier today, he and I did a round table uh, together uh, focusing on this, there are good conversations and there is a good bit of uh, synergy around uh, holding big tech accountable and looking at these issues. And I think you'll see us do something this year. Now, you're also pushing a bill that would ban big tech companies like Facebook and Twitter from discriminating against users for their political views, which you believe is happening. However, it is hard for some people to believe that conservative voices are being censored on Facebook, for example, when so much of the, the Capitol riot uh, was planned on Facebook. Uh, again, you know, what's the evidence that this is happening to the extent that you believe it is? One of the things that you can look at is this lab theory that they decided they were going to block. Uh, sometimes I will put up things and they will block it because content moderators do not agree with whatever it is that I am, uh, I am putting up. Now, what we know is that Big Tech said they were going to be the new public square and they should be the new public square. Uh, but information, and that is why set reforming Section 230 is important. Uh, and getting to things that um, would cause personal harm, eliminating that, uh, changing some of that language around Section 230, that is an important thing that we are going to be taking up. And I think you'll see us work on this in a bipartisan basis, which is how it should be done. And back to the lab leak theory, I, you know, obviously, you know, you're concerned about Dr. Fauci's conversations with Mark Zuckerberg. Um, obviously, Dr. Fauci was talking to President Trump um, to, at great length. Why didn't President Trump pursue this lab leak theory if it is, in fact, true? Well, we would like to know, we would like to know what, uh, what Dr. Fauci and his team, how much information did they share? with uh, President Trump and Vice President Pence. We would also like to know why there were career uh, bureaucrats over at the State Department that were trying to slow walk the investigation that Secretary Pompeo was doing. And then we would also likewise like to know why President Biden decided to end the State Department's investigation and then turn around 
the following day and say to the Intel committee, but we want you to come back to us with a report. All right, 